after Sinead O'Connor's death this week. The Skyboat song in the opening credits of season 7 of Outlander felt even heavier. This season's heavy opening credits have helped the series. Let's be honest, Claire and Jamie's traumatic event scale is so high that it applies solely to them, and maybe Meredith Grey. Because of what Claire knows, this season has been heavy and dreary. Time travel is amusing while you're being chased by a 1,700 seconds Highlander, but it's depressing when you know a great upheaval is approaching and many people will die. Claire knows the Continental Army wins, but she doesn't know if her husband, who loves a fight, is among the dead. This concern has shaped Claire's conduct this half-season. She's tense. Remember when she cried leaving Fraser's Ridge? How she unraveled following her brief British Army captivity. Claire, a woman on the brink, must now watch Jamie fight. With September 1777, Jamie is fighting with Daniel Morgan's Rifle Corps at the First Battle of Saratoga. Jamie and Claire's hasty goodbye. Heartbreaking. Claire looks terrified as Jamie leaves. The adorable cliffhanger showing Jamie asleep on the battlefield earns in a for effort, but no one is fooled. We know Jamie won't die today, we have a season and a half left. Still, Catriona Balf and Sam Hugan are terrifying. However, William's first combat dominates our stay in Saratoga. This season, William has been a snoozefist. However, the naive and idealistic youngster receives a big dose of reality and begins to doubt everything at the conclusion, so I hope this will change. William had always wanted to teach the rebels a lesson with violence, but he had never done it. When Captain Richardson orders him to convey communications away from the battlefield, William walks behind his superior to Simon Fraser and begs him to overrule Richardson and allow him stay. Fight him. This exchange contrasts William and Fraser, one fresh-faced and one weary soul. Fraser helps William remain and fight. But you can see on his face that he realizes, especially since he knows they won't get the reinforcements they expected, that William is signing up for death or serious trauma. William's idealized war quickly crumbles. He and his troops watch the Continental Army come, anxiously conversing. William even confesses to like Rachel. But there is no formal charge or organized fighting. Suddenly Hammond gets hit in the head by a rifle and collapses to the ground. William watches in fear until Simon Fraser tells him to play. William joins a group of troops burying their dead after the fight. William is dismayed to hear General Burgoyne and the other leaders celebrating victory when he knows they barely maintain their ground and the dead count was greater than planned. William had got his battle fix, but it was worse than he expected. Fraser tells William that every guy who fights changes thereafter. We'll see if William's transformation is good or bad. As I mentioned, 1777 was bad, but 1980 won't be much better. Brie, like Claire, has been sorrowful all season due to losing her parents 200 years ago. Sad girl. It will worsen. Roger quickly introduces Buck Mackenzie to his wife. Buck recounts his 1980 origins. He and his family returned to Scotland and Inverness in 1778, when he was abruptly troubled by a beehive-like noise. When he investigated, he found the stones at Craig Nodun and was transported to the future. Obviously confused, Buck's only hope was seeing Roger shopping in Inverness. He followed to Lallabrock. Bree is furious and skeptical of this guy, why didn't he just walk back through the stones? Then Roger, the man Buck almost murdered. Roger appears to like him immediately. He punched him first. Roger warms up to Buck after hearing about Buck's kid, Jemmy's namesake, and seeing Buck's response to finding they're connected. It's why Roger can't inform Buck that the Mackenzie family tree says Buck dies in 1778, the year he traveled from. If right, Buck either dies or never returns to his family. Roger waits till Buck has calmed down before telling him the bad news. Rob Cameron arrives for Roger's promised supper, as if Roger and Bree weren't already juggling enough. Roger and Bree conceal Buck and have a wonderful, though long, meal. Rob, who tells them he lost his son in his divorce because his ex-wife could afford an expensive lawyer, refuses to go home. Rob invites Jemmy to a playdate and overnight with his nephew later that night. Roger and Bree can only remove Rob after consenting. Buck's apology for the hanging isn't great, he blames the times and looks half-hearted, but Roger seems fine with it. What do I know? I just remember Roger's near-death experience. Buck seems to support Roger now, which is good. Buck soon notices Rob's hot eye for Brianna when Bree forces him to work with her. Roger blows it off but tells Bree about it, and the two, aroused from envy, have passionate sex time precisely to the drum solo of In the Air tonight. We all won, honestly. Outlander knows the value of a cold shower, but it leads to a horrible loss. Buck's visit has distracted Roger and Bree. Otherwise, they could have questioned Rob's insatiable curiosity or recognized that Roger's office chest with Jamie and Claire's old letters seemed tampered with. They ignore them. By the time Mandy wakes up screaming and tells her parents she can't feel Jemmy anymore, it's too late. Bree and Roger try to reassure their daughter that Jem is merely having a sleepover, but when she narrates what she feels and sees, they become concerned. Rob Cameron recontacts Rob's sister and discovers there was no playdate or sleepover, and Rob and his car are gone. Roger realizes that Rob read the letters, that Rob assumed Roger's journal was a book, and that Rob has been playing them all. He rightly guesses Rob wants to try time travel and prays Rob skipped the jailies Duncan uses a blood sacrifice to time travel portion of his time travel manual. Roger and Buck run to Craig Nodun to intercept Rob. 
but they instead find Jemmy's scarf near the stones. Roger doesn't know where or when Rob and Jemmy are. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.